A security system is only as strong as its weakest link. Every security system consists of a large number of parts. We must assume that our opponent is smart and that he is going to attack the system at the weakest part. It doesn't matter how strong the other parts are. Just as in a chain, the weakest link will break first. It doesn't matter how strong the other links in the chain are. To improve the security of a system, we must improve the weakest link. But to do that, we need to know what the links are and which one are weak. This is best done by using a tree structure. Each part of a system has multiple links and each link in turn has sublinks. We can organize the links into what we call an attack tree. So let's have a look at an example. Let's say we want to break into a vault. The first levelings are the walls, the floor, the door and the ceiling. Breaking through any of them gets us into the vault. Let's look at the door in more detail. The door system has its own links. The connection between the door frame and the walls, the lock, the door itself, the bolts that keep the door in the door frame, and the hinges. We could continue by discussing individual lines of attack on the lock, one of which is to acquire a key, which in turn leads the whole tree about stealing the key in some way. Attack trees provide valuable insights as to possible lines of attack. Trying to secure a system without first doing such an analysis very often leads to useless work. Our opponents are intelligent, clever, malicious and devious. They do things nobody had ever thought of before. They don't play by the rules and they are completely unpredictable. You have to think like a malicious attacker to find weaknesses in your own work. So let's have a closer look at attack trees. Attack trees were defined by Bruce Schneier to model threat against computer systems. Attack trees are multi-level diagrams consisting of one root, leaves and children. From the bottom up, child nodes are conditions which must be satisfied to make the direct parent node true. When the root is satisfied, the attack is complete. Each node may be satisfied only by its direct child nodes. OR nodes are used to represent alternatives, which is the standard connection. AND nodes are used to represent different steps towards achieving the same goal, which need special highlighting. Attackers can't achieve the goal unless both sub-goals are satisfied. Basically, you represent attacks against a system in a tree structure, with the goal as a root node and different ways of achieving the goal as leaf nodes. Every node is a possible weak link of the system, which leads directly to the goal or to another node. Each node becomes a sub-goal and children of that node are ways to achieve the sub-goal. Once a tree is built, one can assign values to the various leaf nodes, then make calculations about the nodes. Once the values are assigned, one can calculate the security of the goal. The process of constructing the attack tree is as follows. First, we define the attacker's overall goal, for example, get password. Then we decompose the overall goal into sub-goals. Continue the stepwise decomposition into smaller and smaller tasks. The completed diagram of attacks and sub-attacks is called an attack tree. As you can see here, end connections are marked different in the tree. Another tree type quite similar to attack trees are fault trees. Fault tree analysis, FTA, is a top-down deductive failure analysis in which an undecided state of a system is analyzed using Boolean logic to combine a series of lower-level events. This analysis method is mainly used in safety engineering, reliability engineering to understand how system can fail, to identify the best way to reduce risk and to determine event rates of a safety accident or a particular system level failure. The basic symbols used in FTA are grouped as events, gates and transform symbols. In our example, you can see how to use the different symbols. The last tree type we will see in this video are event trees. Event tree analysis, ETA, is a powerful tool that will identify all consequences of a system that have a probability of occurring after an initiating event. 
An inventory analysis explores an initial event and its effects on the analyzed system. It shows an initial event and the events that may follow it with various options. The initial event is usually placed on the left and the outcomes on the right. The possible events are depicted in the middle. During the analysis, the tree of options is built and the probabilities for each option are identified and entered. The result of the analysis is the outcome column that shows possible outcomes options as a reaction to the initial event. Each outcome option has a calculated probability of its occurrence. This technique may be applied to a system early in the design process to identify potential issues that may arise, rather than correcting the issues after they occur. So let's sum up what we've heard. A textures model the sequential attacks of an intelligent adversary to defeat a defensive system. We go from the leaves to the top by making conditions true. It focuses on finding possible threats in every design and developing process. Faultries deductively model the combination of system failures and human errors that could lead to an, to an accident. We move from the root to the bottom by checking the conditionals. Its main cause is to analyze failures and cannot be applied to every step of the design process. Event trees inductively model the sequences of events that lead to an accident. Here the tree grows from left to right and calculates the probability of a path. The event tree should be applied to a system early in the design process to detect and prevent possible issues before they occur. <laughs>